Wisdom cannot be learned merely in theory through lectures. It must be earned through hard experience. Just as one cannot become an expert swimmer merely by reading a book on the different swimming strokes, you will have to jump into the pool and practice them again and again. Likewise, whatever knowledge we have imbibed through lectures and books, when we put it into practice through the vicissitudes of life, that is when it fructifies into pure scintillating wisdom. These vicissitudes are so necessary in the creation of wisdom. Parents who protect their children from hardships and difficulties, they do them a disfavor. As the saying goes, treat your children with kids' gloves and they will grow up into babies. Such overprotected children, they have fragile personalities. They find difficulty in making choices and they are often risk averse. God is our most benevolent father and he does not do us any disfavor. He deliberately ensures that we have ample challenges to face through which we will grow to be the real possessors of experiential knowledge. In the process of growth, pain is not necessarily a bad thing. Intuitively, we run towards pleasure and run away from pain. But factually, pain can also be a blessing. Like for example, if I put my hand into the fire, two things will happen. There will be immense pain and the hand will start burning. Now the burning is a bad thing. The pain is not. It's an indication that look, something is going wrong. You need to take it out. Scientists realized that their earlier understanding of leprosy as the decay of bodily parts due to some kind of bacteria was wrong. They realized that bacteria was only benumbing the parts as a result of which people were hitting those hands and feet into solid objects and thereby damaging them because the experience of pain had been removed. So what should be our outlook towards pain that comes in the form of adversities, insults, hardships, etc.? Let's see what the art and science of happiness has to say about it. God has a grand design for us. He has blessed us with infinite potential. His desire is that we manifest this potential and let His glory shine through. He does not shelter us from adversity. On the contrary, He sends hard times precisely to make us aware of our shortcomings and eliminate them. Doing so enables our higher self and God's glory to sparkle brightly. How so? Let's learn from the eagles. They build their nest at thousands of feet height where there are roaring winds. So to ensure the nest remains stable on that cliff rock, the eagles choose sturdy, thorny twigs and they fly hundreds of miles to gather them. Once the twigs are in place and the nest is made, they then start 
padding the nest by adding cotton and leaves on the inside and then the mother eagle sits and lays her eggs finally the eggs hatch and the little eagle chicks they emerge the parents get busy gathering fodder for their little ones but as the chicks start growing the nest becomes a crowded place and the mother eagle realizes her children will have to come out she does a very cruel act or so it seems giving pain to her babies by slowly starting to remove the padding and when the babies feel the pricks on their body they come out of the nest onto the cliff they are still scared of heights and stay away from the edge one day when the mother realizes her babies are now grown enough for the plunge she lures them one by one to the cliff edge and then pushes her little one as the baby enters a free fall in sheer fear it spreads its wings and then does the thing which is most natural to eagles as the king of the birds it starts flying in all its resplendent glory so that push that nudge that pain was not the cruelty of the mother rather its kindness and compassion god loves us many fold more than the mother eagle loves its chicks and he has created in the grand design of this world both happiness and distress fame and infamy success and failure we must learn to take it all in our stride in this matter the bhagavad gita says something very powerful ya nisha sarvabhutanam tasam jagarti sanyami shri krishna says arjun what the worldly human beings consider day the wise sage looks on as night and what the worldly beings consider night the sage of wisdom sees as day now what does that mean for a worldly person the opportunity for wanton pleasure and indulgence is day it is the desirable thing but the sage who has understood the purpose of life says this will only impede the progress of the soul we would rather welcome challenges that catalyze the unfoldment of our inner divinity it is for this reason that kunti devi had prayed to shri krishna vipada santu nashashwa tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yat syad punar bhav darshanam when after the mahabharat shri krishna asked kunti must what moon do you want she said my lord give me hardships austerities deprivation in this world shri krishna said kunti what is it you are asking everyone in every temple says sukh sampatti sab aave kasht mete tan ka you are asking the reverse kunti said my lord you know everything i do but speak it out let others hear as well kunti said my lord it's because of the external allurements that we turn away from you and forget you when these are snatched away we will naturally come to the conclusion the worldly delights are not my goal we will then turn around and look towards you and attain eternal beatitude hence those saints who prioritize self growth beyond sensual pleasures they don't mind difficulties along the path 
There is the story of a wise man in Europe in the 19th century called Gurdjieff. In his satsang was an old man who used to create difficulties for everyone. And they were all fed up of his ways and his ironic behaviors. One day he left and everyone heaved a sigh of relief. But Gurdjieff went up to him and beseeched, please come back. The old man refused. Gurdjieff said, I will pay you for remaining in the satsang. Now the old man was there on a payment. And when the other devotees complained, he said, this man is like the yeast. To make bread, you need yeast. He is like the catalyst who is helping everyone improve from within by presenting them with challenging behaviors. When we keep that as our perspective, we can claim our happiness despite negative circumstances.